Howdy guys and welcome back to Old Southern Kitchen and Garden. As you can see I have my trusty deep fryer out today which means we're going to have a good old southern deep fried dinner. What I want to make today is chicken fried chicken and we're going to serve it along with mashed potatoes and a homemade white pepper gravy. Now I've already made the mashed potatoes and I will link all the to that video so you can see the recipe for that. But for today's video, I wanted to go over exactly how we country fried chicken. You could do this with chicken, you can do it with country fried steak, actually with any type of meat. I've done it with pork chops, pork fingers, I've even done it with ribeye, which is extremely good. Now what you want to do to get started is, I slice my chicken breast in half. So each breast is going to be two pieces that we're going to fry, and then what I do after that is I take it and I pound it with a meat tenderizer. You don't want it too thin, but you do want it tender because when it is this thin, it's going to cook in five minutes. So you want to make sure that the juices are still in and that it'll be perfectly fried when you're done. I have all the chicken breast here in this bowl and I've seasoned it with salt, pepper, garlic, and a little Cajun seasoning. But we you do you and season it with whatever you would like it seasoned with. Now, as with all country fried recipes, we're gonna go through a flour, liquid, flour batter, which will make the batter crunchy and adhere to the actual piece of meat. So right here I have flour and I've well seasoned it. You're gonna hear this word seasoning a lot through this video. I've seasoned it really well because Nobody wants a flavorless crust, to tell you the honest God truth. And here I have three eggs and a cup of milk, which I have whisked together, and I've seasoned this well also. You want each component of this meal to be seasoned, because you'll get seasoning in the meat when you season the meat, and throughout the crust with the rest of the seasoning in the milk and flour batter. So let's get started. With each piece of meat you're going to fry, you want to take it into the flour and pat it. So you can see I have a glove. You can get these at any box store. I like to use them a lot in the kitchen. Helps with the cleanup. But as you can see, it's just a little flour on each piece of chicken. So you're going to go from the flour into the milk batter. Make sure it's totally coated in the milk batter and then back into your flour mixture. If I didn't have the gloves on, this would be a mess already. I've done it before, and you can go the one wet, one dry method, but I always forget, and I end up with a cake of dough on my hands before I get anything finished frying. So you can see this is gonna make a crust, and see how it fell over? So you can just make sure that every piece of this chicken breast is ready for the fryer. I'm going to do one more and I'm going to get that frying. So once again we're going to go flour, make sure it's coated totally, but then you want to dust off the excess flour and we're going to put it into the wet mixture. This is also a good way to stretch meat. I know chicken is expensive nowadays and by cutting the breast in half you're actually getting two pieces, and when you're eating it, you don't even realize you're only eating half of a chicken breast. It also makes a great sandwich because it's not a thick piece of meat, so it won't tear the bread apart. Okay, and now that we have this breaded, we're going to drop it into a 350 degree fryer. And we're going to let that fry for four to five minutes until it's 165 degrees inside. Just listen to that sizzle. I love the sound of frying chicken. This has been frying for four minutes and it is at 165. I just tested it with the thermometer. So we're gonna take it out. I let it drain for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna put it on a paper towel lined sheet. Can you see the crust on that? And look at it sizzle. So we have two pieces down, 
and a few more to go. We're gonna just drop it in. Okay guys, all the chicken's been fried, but in the south we have to go one step further. You can't have chicken fried anything without a good white gravy. So what I've done is, in the pot here on a high heat, I've melted half a stick of butter. And I'm going to add in flour. Now you can see I'm adding the flour that I've cooked the chicken in. I have a... Seek, I have a a strategy for doing that because this will have the flavor of the chicken in it but it also has some of the seasonings of the chicken which will go throughout the entire meal now you want to throw this in here and cook it down just for about a minute until the flour taste is cooked out and once that is done you're gonna add whole milk and you want to add it a little at a time that way you won't get lumps in your gravy. Just a little bit. Ain't nobody like no lumpy gravy. And you want to whisk in between each one until it gets smooth again. Y'all know it had been quiet because I was out working in the garden. Y'all didn't hear this big old voice in the background, but I'm here now because it's about time to eat. So, back to Chuck. And we're just going to take it as a slow process and whisk out all the little lumps in between each one. White gravy seems like it'd be a hard thing to make, but it really isn't, as long as you take it slow. Don't just add all the milk you're going to add to the gravy at one time, or you will end up with a lumpy mess, which is never good on top of any fried foods. And this is going to be going on top of the mashed potatoes also, so I want to make sure it's really nice and creamy. You can see all the lumps are gone again, so we're gonna add more milk. And you just wanna keep adding milk till you get to the consistency that you like. It should be a little thick, but not as thick as it is now. You want it to be able to pour over the chicken more like a sauce. And as you can see, every time we add a little more milk, it's gonna get more white gravy texture. But I did add whole butter and there is some seasoning in here also. That come to temperature. I like to whisk it the entire time I'm cooking it. That's another way to ensure that I don't get lumps in the gravy. But as you can see, every time it heats up, it's going to get a little thicker, a little thicker. And I have it almost at the consistency I want it, so I'm probably just going to add a little more milk. And then we'll fix up the seasonings with just a little bit of salt. And some black pepper. That's how you get the traditional pepper gravy. And there you have it. A gravy is that simple to make and can go with pretty much any meal. I've done this before and use it as a base for other ingredients. I'll add tomatoes. At work, I've actually added tomatoes, uh, jalapenos, and some type of seafood. I did crawfish and crab and poured it on top of my chicken fried chicken. Big okay. hit. Okay, well, we're going to come in and get a closer look at that gravy. You can see it has the perfect consistency. Still a little thick, but perfect for dipping. Look at that chicken, that fried chicken. That's gonna be so good with that gravy or without. But y'all, that is some beautiful fried chicken. 
Let me switch y'all back down. And that's about it for this meal, guys. Let me get a plate together and I'll be right back to show you the finished product. Here we go, guys. This is the finished plate. Now we had some asparagus left over from the other night. And of course, macaroni and cheese. The Southern fried chicken with white pepper gravy. Can't get any better than that. Thanks for joining us today for this meal. I hope you take the time to actually make it. It's really delicious. can be made really quick, as you saw, and it'll please pretty much anyone. So if you like this video and you consider trying it, please like the channel and subscribe to the, subscribe to the channel and like the videos so that you can see all the other cooking and gardening videos we've been putting out. Until next time, thanks and hope to see you soon. Bye, y'all.